Okay, let's talk about the OGET test. And that stands for the Oklahoma General Education Test. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are an educator in the state of Oklahoma and you're preparing for the OGET uh, math section. And that is a good thing because there's a considerable amount of mathematics that are on the OGET. And I like to classify that as more like high school level math, uh, algebra, and geometry. Um, it's definitely, you know, it was pretty much like the bulk of the kind of math you're going to be seeing on the OGET, amongst other things. But that's a, a kind of good descriptive way to kind of think about it. You're not going to need to know calculus, etc., and things like that. But you're going to have to be strong in high school level mathematics in terms of algebra and geometry, etc. So what I have here uh, for you is a nice little practice problem, okay, that you should be able to find pretty easy if you're fully prepared for the OGET math section. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and, uh, well, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last uh, several, several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include an OGET uh, math prep course. Okay, really, really comprehensive. All my courses have taken me years to construct. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video if that's something you want to check out if you need some help preparing for the OGET math section. But let's go ahead and get to this problem. So here's what we're going to do. I like to uh, approach these problems in this way. First, I want to give those of you out there a chance just to solve this problem. Then I'm going to uh, give a hint. So if you're not quite sure what to do, I'm going to give you a little bit of hint, then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so if you're thinking, well, let's just go ahead and just get to this. We have a triangle, a particular type of triangle, and the problem is I'd like you to find the uh, solve for x. I want you to find the length of this side of this particular triangle uh, with this given information. So if you can do that, go ahead and pause the video and uh, get that solution in there. And for those of you who need a hint, I'm going to give it to you now. So if you don't want to hear the hint, pause the video. All right, so here comes the hint. So here we have a triangle. Now this is a particular type of triangle. It's a right triangle. So when you have a right triangle, you want to be thinking like sirens should be going off, <laughs> bells should be going off. You know, when you, anytime you're dealing with triangles and you see this little thing like this in a corner, that indicates that that's a right triangle. In other words, this is 90 degrees. Okay, that little corner angle. So when you have triangles that are right triangles, okay, then you can apply the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so that's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is super, super important. You definitely need to know how to apply this. Now, this uh, theorem only applies for right triangles. So in other words, if we had a triangle like, let's say something like this, well, let me just kind of make it a little more obvious, something like this, okay? Now, the Pythagorean theorem will not apply, okay? Because there's not a 90 degree angle. But, you know, if you see a triangle and it has this, you can use this theorem. One of the most important theorems in mathematics. So, well, let me go ahead and leave that up there for you guys. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so that's the hint. Now, uh, so hopefully that those of you out there who say, oh, I got the hint, I'm going to go ahead and do the problem. Go ahead and do the problem, and now I'm going to solve it. So let's talk about this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, this is the Pythagorean theorem. And what does it uh, uh, mean? Well, it's when you have a right triangle, we have a particular relationship with the sides. So we have a, b, and c. Now, here's what the most important part of this theorem you need to know is that the c, okay, uh, variable, these are these have to do with the lengths of uh, a right triangle. The c is always the longest side of a right triangle. That's called the hypotenuse, okay? So that's what you really need to know. The a and b are just the other side. So you can have the a here uh, or here. So you can think of this as a or b or b or a, however you want to do it. You won't get the problem wrong. But a or B, but just the longest side, the hypotenuse is always C. That's key, okay? All right, so with that being said, I can just follow this um, 
uh, formula, okay, this theorem, to solve a problem like this. So how do we how do we do that? Well, in this particular problem, this would be my a and this would be my b or b or a doesn't make a difference. But this value here is c. So c is equal to 10. And let's say uh, a is my x and b is my three. So let's just go ahead and replace these variables. Sort of uh, sort of a squared. Let's just have this as x squared plus b squared is what? That's going to be 3. Okay, so that's going to be 3 squared. And then c squared is going to be 10 squared. Okay, so if you understand how the relationship between these variables and what's going on and how I kind of plugged them in into this uh, formula, now you could simply just uh, solve this basic uh, algebraic equation. So this is another good little sub-problem here. So... If you had trouble setting this up, go ahead and see if you can solve for x here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this now. So this would be x squared plus 3 squared is obviously going to be 9. And 10 squared is 100. So now to solve for x squared, I need to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. And I get x squared is equal to 91. So to solve for x, I have to take the square root of both sides so x is going to be equal to positive or negative the square root of 91. And because I'm dealing with distances um, on a triangle, uh, we could just go ahead and just drop that negative distance and just say this is uh, x is equal to the square root, the positive square root of 91. And of course, you can go into your calculator and get a decimal uh, for that. But if you just gave me your answer as x is equal to the square root of 91, I would be very pleased and and uh, say outstanding, give you an A+, plus, <laughs> smiley face, all that good stuff that you'll be giving your students, I'm sure. But um, anyways, so if you got the problem right without the hint, that's excellent, okay? If you got the uh, problem right with the hint, that's excellent as well. If you struggled with this problem, don't panic. Again, uh, a problem like this is simply just to give you feedback, but... Uh, even if you got this problem right, you know, by that, no means is that verification that you're totally ready for the OGET because there's a lot of, of mathematics that you need to know. Okay, the key is just to prepare. So this is one particular uh, subset in the topic or uh, uh, the branch of mathematics of geometry, but it's very, very important. You definitely need to understand the Pythagorean theorem to, uh, to be fully prepared for the OGET math section. Again, the thing is to be fully prepared. Sometimes you're like, oh, I know the Pythagorean theorem, boom, 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 boom. You go on a test and uh, you don't see it. But guess what? Maybe the next time you have to take the test or another version of the test, you see a problem that way. So you just never know what you're going to encounter. That's why you really have to be prepared across the board. So let's go on and wrap up this video. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link to my OGET math prep course in the description of this video. Very, very comprehensive. I think you'll really be impressed uh, with uh, uh, my uh, curriculum. You know, all my courses, I do a lot of research. Uh, it's taken me a lot of years. So anyways, you can go ahead and check that out if you like. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for many, many years. I already have hundreds of videos on my uh, channel that can help you prepare for the OGET math section. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave us feedback. How long have you been teaching? Or, uh, are you new to teaching? Um, what level you know, do you teach? Uh, any feedback is good feedback. Um, yeah, another thing, too, about teachers and, uh, is there are, well, I don't know what, it, you know, over the last, say, 20 years, I would say at the time of this video, maybe a little bit longer, there's been more opportunities for people who have not been teachers to become teachers. In other words, they've uh, served in other careers, they have a college degree, but now they want to become a, a teacher, and they can kind of just make a lateral transfer into teaching by taking uh, uh, different types of tests versus just, you know, going back to college to get an education uh, degree. So anyways, if you're one of those folks that have done another career and uh, teaching is your second career, you know, uh, I'd be interested to hear from you. But I will say this much. Teaching is a challenging career, and uh, probably only other teachers are going to really understand 
uh, that, you know, um, how challenging it is. And generally speaking, most people um, will look at teachers and say, oh, you know, uh, yeah, I could be a teacher. You know, um, it, it's easy. They get the summers off and <laughs> all you got to do is manage those kids. And, you know, I would I'd have those kids, uh, you know, really, you know, snapping and popping and you know they'd sit down and they'll do exactly <laughs> believe me when i tell you right only other teachers know that no it's not that easy so um, i have the highest regard for my fellow teachers out there so you know making uh, these videos and courses like that to help you out you know i take a lot of uh, uh pride in doing that but with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your education career we definitely need great teachers um, out there. So thank you for your time and have a great day.